All right, so I figured we'd uh, do something a little different here. I've been struggling with all the shadows in the wash bay, so I figured we'll come out to my normal photo taking spot in the sun. It's uh, what 95 degrees and 85 percent humidity, but let's let's uh, let's let's shoot this a little differently here. What I wanted to talk about today were all the different modifications I did to the Raptor. I get a lot of questions about that, and uh, I was. I've been waiting to get the truck done, do all the things that I thought I would do, and then share with you where I'm at with it, uh, and share with you why and how and how much and all of that stuff. So um, I'm, I'm happy with the way the truck turned out. I, I think it looks cool. Uh, the, the main thing, uh, the main advantage to it, uh, and the biggest and most advantageous modification, I think, is the rear end. Uh, doing the Deavers in the rear makes it a, a gooder, a, a, a gooder, a much better towing rig, right? So it, it makes it better at towing, uh, also makes it flatter, you know? So when you're, when you're driving around on the roads, like I do, uh, I'm not off-roading in this thing, uh, it just makes it the turn better, it, uh, you have less body roll, it just makes it a more enjoyable experience. So I'm gonna take you through step-by-step step each part and piece and why I did it. All right, so the first thing, and I knew that I would do this mainly because of the white Raptor, uh, the, my white Gen 1, first thing that was a necessity was uh, painting the fender flares, f color matching them. These come in the same color as the front grille, uh, so I had these color match, and I took that as an opportunity to fix the factory defective. There was a, a spot here which probably was a run of some sort or a ding or something in the vehicle delivery center. Uh, and then the reason why I know it, they tried to repair it is because there was, there was uh, polish flung all the way down the side of the truck. Uh, the dealership didn't do it. Uh, I instructed the dealership, as I do with all of my cars, to not touch it. Right? Don't mess with it. Uh, don't wash it. Don't take the stickers off. Don't take the stuff off the seats. And so when I brought it home, there was a big, uh, there was a big spongy run spot and it was a dullness to it. And so a lot of people were questioning, well, oh, you need to take that to the dealer, you need to go back, you need to have them fix it. But in my world, I don't want a dealership or a body shop that's affiliated with a dealership. In almost all instances, I don't want to mess with my car. I want to take it to my people. And so it cost me 750 bucks to have them repaint and blend. So they, they, uh, they refinished. They didn't need to blend the panels, so I didn't need any paint here. But the match is just dead. I mean, we're in the sun here and it's, it's dead on. They matched the orange peel, which there's a there's slight orange peel on this truck. Uh, they matched everything. Uh, so it's, I mean, you would never know that it, that it was repainted. Uh, so they, they had to, you know, sand it, um, fill it and repaint this, this part, part of the fender. And then in part of the process, we painted the fender flares, which I think makes, it makes a huge difference. So we paint the underside, paint the, paint the uppers, and uh, did that to the front and rear. So the, the rear fender, well, same, same story. The difference is here, up underneath in the fender well, uh, is a kind of a grayish, non-undercoated, unfinished look. So up under the fender well is where I had them, and this wasn't my idea, this was Ultimate's idea. They do this on pretty much every Raptor that they do. Uh, they, we, uh, we undercoated uh, or rhino lined the, the, the under upper area of the, whatever you call it, the fender well here. So painted rear fender flare. I think it, what it does, you know, from this angle, I mean, it, it creates a, a kind of wide hip, slender waist effect of the Raptor. I just like that style. Uh, I can't take credit for it. My buddy Charles, that was his style in the previous Raptor, which I thought was so cool. Uh, you know, getting rid of, we'll, we'll talk about the next modification here, but getting rid of the, the side steps uh, and making them motorized so that that illusion you get from painting the fender flares, bringing the wheels and tires out to flush, just makes it look, I think, much tougher. So that's the, that's the fender flare. This is something I'm still a little torn on. I wanted to see what gloss black was like on the applique. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, I thought about, I was back and forth on whether I ordered it with the applique or not. I'm almost wishing I got it without it. I'm not a big fan of logos or emblems at all. I mean, my GT3 RS doesn't have a logo on it anywhere. I've took all, taken all the emblems off, even the Porsche crest. Uh, so I wanted to see what this was like in gloss black, and a lot of people have said, well, why would you do gloss? There's no gloss. I mean, there's some gloss here on the, on the whatever you call this, the deck lid, 
the this is like a matte gray I don't know in my world gloss black matches everything now you know if I could do it over again I, I don't know what I'd do uh, again if I could do it over again I'd probably just get the bane the, the plain deck uh, deck lid here or, or the tailgate uh, I don't know uh, but we painted this gloss black, and I'll show you in the front here. I also painted the front grill black, which was a huge mistake because it was already it was bug stained instantaneously. Uh, which for most people, you know, from 10 feet away, it looked great. But for me, I'm always up in it, touching and polishing and waxing and and cleaning. Uh, actually. When I took it down to Ultimate and we put the original grill back on, they, they didn't even charge me anything. They took it from their truck, put the gloss black on theirs, and gave me their their you know their base you know the base gray. Uh, so they were happy to take it off my hands. They didn't think it was a problem at all. But uh, we did this as part of the modification. So this, the uh, the the paint on the fender, the paint on the fender flares. So it was what was it, 750 bucks for that? For that, they they did it as a package. I think it was like uh, I think it was like 2,500 bucks with the fixing of the fender um, to do to do all the paint uh, for for the truck. And you know that's probably rather pricey, um, but when you're looking for the best, I mean that's what you got to pay. You, know, you got to pay to play. Um, so that was the you know rough cost of doing the rhino lining, the fender flare painting and the front and rear grill painting as well. All right, the next and one of my favorite modifications of the truck is to do the, the side steps, the motorized side steps. So the, you know, the factory Raptor has a big heavy duty plate on the side, which of course, if you're rock crawling or high speed off-roading, you'd probably want to stick with those. You know, they're attached to the frame of the truck, really, really stout. Whereas these, these Amp Research side steps are more uh, mall crawler, if you will. Uh, I just think they look good. Uh, and, and the position of them is much better. So I'm 6'2", and so when I'm, when I'm getting in and out of the truck, these are lower. So these steps come down, I think about eight inches lower, six inches lower than the factory steps. So it's just a natural step for me to get in and out of the truck, right? It's, it's just a natural position. You know, part of it is I'm a little taller. So the other steps are about yay high. So what I found on the factory steps, and some of you taller guys probably noticed the same thing. It's like, all right, do I just step in or do I step on the step? It's just, it, they're just not at a really good position. So the position of this is much better for getting in and out of the truck. And then of course, as you close the door, the beauty of closing the door is then they disappear. I know one problem that these can present if you're in colder climates when they'll, they can, these, these, these motorized side steps can tend to freeze up. I think if you're getting up into, you know, areas like, uh, uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Wyoming, uh, Montana, where they, you get really, really sub-freezing temperatures. I think you know up in Maine and some of these some some areas where you get just brutally cold, uh, you can have issues. But I know I have buddies in the Northeast that have it, not not an issue, other than maybe the snow getting caked on it occasionally. Um, but these uh, these are pretty stout. I mean, when you stand on it, I'm 225 pounds, you know, and there's not a lot of flex. I mean, it just it uh, it holds me no problem, you know, you know, front and rear. It also helps my kids, you know, when they're when they're getting in and out of the car. It's a stout setup, and they bolt right to the frame. Uh, one lesson I learned, I talked about this in the last wash video. Uh, what I used to do is I'd hold my foot here, close the door when I was washing the truck, and it would, you know, this would go try to go up, and it would stop. I thought that was a natural stop. But what it does is it burns out the transmission, the gears uh, eventually spin and crack, uh, and then your step stops going up. So don't do that. You don't want to. You don't want to stop it from opening. You'd want to leave the door open when you're washing to spray it off and then close it. Uh, I think these were like 1,800 bucks or something like that installed. So the first trip to Ultimate, the first trip that I, I did to uh, to go and have the fender flares. The front and rear painted, the fender fixed, and the Amp Research sidestep. I think it was like 5200 bucks was the ticket with labor or something like that. So a lot of money right off the bat before I even got into wheels, tires, and suspension. All right, next up are that this is the next thing I did. I'm sort of taking you through the progression of the step-by-step -step that I did to modify this. Uh, these are method cast wheels. 
you know, I really can't find any really nice forged wheels that I like the style. Uh, and you know, when you have these big old tires anyway, the weight savings becomes a moot point. This thing's big and slow regardless. Uh, so I decided to just cheap out and do some inexpensive cast wheels. I think these were uh, 215 bucks a piece. Uh, this is the Mesh uh, 309. So there's a 306 and a 309, which will confuse you. It's the, the fake bead lock is the difference, right? So the, the 306 has the, the, the bolts sit on top. The 309, the bolts have this little little flushing, or they're they're slightly you know, they're slightly recessed into the into the fake bead lock. Uh, so these are 18 by 9 and a plus 18 millimeter offset. You need six by 135 bolt pattern, so you have six lugs, uh, 135 millimeter bolt pattern, uh, and then these are spline. Uh, spline lugs, just, just cheapos you can get from basically anywhere. I called and bought them from Method. I also swapped out, which was a, I think it cost about a hundred bucks, 110 bucks to swap out the bolts. Uh, I had to special order those separately from the wheels because they, they didn't have them, but these are uh, T, I think they're T304 stainless uh, bolts. You, I really couldn't find them anywhere. They were really, they were really stubby. I think they're six millimeters long, so they're kind of stubby and an odd size, and, uh, and so I, I ended up getting them from Method. You have to call and get them special. They're not on the website and uh, nowhere really has what you need to get. So uh, the trucks.com and fourwheelparts.com didn't have what I needed. So, uh, so and I couldn't, I couldn't get anybody on the line that knew what the heck they were talking about. So I went right to Method. Uh, these are the matte black version. Uh, and then Method has the good old goofy, you know, remember all the American racing wheels with the big stick out plastic center cap. Uh, they come with that. Uh, this is from, I'll put a link in the description, it's uh, eluding me, the name of the company uh, that makes this. Uh, but this, uh, this, this oh shoot, what was it? Um, anyway, it's an aluminum, you know, uh, cut and powder coated to match the same matte finish. I want to say they were like another 150 bucks, so pretty expensive. Uh, but I think it really sets off the wheel and makes it look great. We have uh, uh, KO2s, which I really loved. I know the KO3s, I believe, have just come out. Uh, these KO2s are great, great tires, and these are these are the, um, the all terrains. Uh, I don't want to go to mud terrains because I didn't want to deal with all the noise. Uh, but these are a 325. Uh, what are these? 325, 65, I believe. Yeah, 65, 18. 320, 325, 65, 18. The factory wheels are a 315, 70, 17. So since we're, uh, our cross section is now a 65, when you measure them, they're within, I think, a millimeter in size. So my speedometer should be relatively accurate. Uh, so that, that's the wheel, wheel tire combo uh, and uh, same front and rear. They're, they're non-staggered. All right, next up is uh, probably the most controversial thing that I've done uh, outside of painting the front grille black, which is now, you can see, back to the stock finish, is to do the, uh, this is the Addictive Desert Designs, or ADD Pro front bumper. And uh, I got lured in by the picture online. I think it looks incredible from, from the three-quarter angle, from the front angle, from if you're, you're looking at it from the rear view mirror of another car, from basically any angle except for the side profile, which we'll show you. Um, when you look at from the side profile, it looks like your chin is a little short. Uh, but all the other angles look great. I, I think it's the best looking bunk, bumper for this car or this, this truck. Uh, the problem with this is, you know, the bumper is $1,300, $1,400. Um, but we have to cut the frame. So you have to cut the frame horns off. Uh, you have to relocate the speed sensor for the adaptive cruise control. So you need a new bracket for that. It has to be relocated. And you also need to uh, relocate the intercooler. And so we decided to do a, an AFE uh, bigger, much more stout intercooler, just in case I ever decided to tune the truck. Uh, you really can't see it, but we painted it black. But the intercooler is yay big. It goes from here to there and over where the factory intercooler is about this big. Uh, so we painted it black so you can't see it. It now sits behind the grill. Uh, and then we have this pre-runner style, um, much, much slimmer looking front bumper, which, you know, it's a, it's a love or hate thing. I'm kind of in between. Uh, one day I wake up and love it. Next day I wake up and say, ah, I don't know. 
The issue is, and forgive me to those of you who have other bumpers, the issue for me is other bumpers remind me of, um, you know, 80s dad who, uh, who now thinks he's cool still and uh, has, uh, has uh, razzle jeans and, uh, and does biceps over and over and over again and uh, listens to, uh, to country uh, followed by uh, Drake. Uh, at uh, maximum volume with a 12-inch woofers in the uh, back seat of his Raptor. I'm not that guy, so sorry. <laughs> sorry for that descriptive of a, uh, of a stereotype, but that's what all the other bumpers remind me of with the big rolled steel, and it looks like it has rhinestones, and they have diamonds and stuff cut out, and it's just not my style. This is, as of right now, in the Gen 2, the cleanest bumper outside of, of course, the OE bumper. Uh, so, I don't know, for now, I'm sticking with it. It's certainly, I mean, you could, you could drop kick this sucker and, and you'll hurt your foot. I mean, it's, it's pretty stout, pretty incredible. Uh, you're 7,500 bucks, uh, probably closer to nine grand into doing this disaster, right? So I would understand why most people would just leave the darn bumper alone. I wanted to give it a whirl. Um, uh, I'm going to stick with it for now. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, it's, it's a love or hate thing. I think, uh, I think it will look cooler too when I do the light. I'm going to do a rigid, you know, straight light bar here, which may look, may look, make it look a little less, um, a little less, uh, chinny, less, you know, l lack of chin. Um, but you know, it's a, it's a really stout, amazingly crafted piece and that uh, really looks incredible. So, you know, if you like the look of it, it's the best bumper by far on this truck. I'm standing here looking down at the tire and I'm wanting to denib all of the uh, individual treads, but I have a feeling that would take a long time. So rear suspension, rear front, front suspension. I mean, the front is pretty simple. It's just a collar. So we did the RPG two and a quarter. Uh, so um, you know, front sitting two and a quarter higher. The rear is sitting about an inch and a half higher. Uh, and the rear is where the suspension change uh, or the suspension upgrade really, really comes into play. Um, the front is just a collar that the spring sits on uh, and you know, raises it up in order to level it. You know, Raptors from, from the factory have a slight rake to it. Uh, and most people agree it looks much better when you get that rake taken out. I still have a tiny bit of rake, um, but, but it, uh, it's much more level now. So basically what we're doing with uh, this is a RPG stage three rear suspension, which includes a couple of components. One, it's a frame brace that runs across the body which then connects to our bump stops, which are completely unnecessary for what I'm doing. I'm probably never ever gonna hit the bump stops, but these really stout bump stops on the side, these piston actuated, I'm not, I'm not an expert in, uh, in rear suspensions on trucks, um, but the, uh, the RPG bump stop, it will you know, essentially grab or catch the, uh, the solid axle or catch the axle in, in, under, under duress in, in, a, in a high speed, uh, you know, jumping over stuff environment. But the biggest difference in the rear here is the addition of the, uh, the Deaver's uh, uh, rear uh, leaf springs. The factory, the factory sectioned leaf spring is a three section leaf spring, where I believe these are eight sectioned. Uh, and because they're eight sectioned, they're much taller. And so there's a block that the factory leaf spring sits on. So we remove the block, then the leaf spring sits right on the, on the frame or on the axle. Uh, and so now we have a, uh, the, the, this, this, this Deaver spring is a plus three size spring. Uh, it ends up becoming a plus one spring when we remove the two inch block, if that makes sense. Uh, so we gain about an inch in the rear, a little over an inch in the rear. Uh, but the main thing I gain is, uh, is stability in the rear. So, uh, you know, off axis turning, um, when you're driving around the street, it's much more pliable. Plus, you can bring the camera around, plus the, the stoutness of the rear suspension. You know, if I did this on a factory Raptor, you know, the thing will sag considerably. If I tow without these more stout springs, I, I was getting a, you know, a whole bunch of sag. So it affords you the ability to put another few hundred pounds in the rear. Uh, and then uh, also the byproduct is you also improve overall handling. I don't know about the off-road capabilities, but supposedly it also makes it more capable off-road as well. The shocks I left the same front and rear, so they're the factory Fox shocks, uh, but this, Suspension upgrade, shoot. 
because uh, I did the front bumper as well. I want to say the suspension upgrade with install and alignment and everything was about six thousand bucks. Uh, my 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 price tag for the front, all the front bumper and the relocation, and all that stuff, plus the suspension was what fifteen five, uh, something like that. So it was. Uh, yeah, it was a stinger. Um, lots of labor, lots of time. They had about four solid days of labor into getting the truck all, all set up, excluding this. You know, so you figure I have about twenty thousand bucks worth of stuff on the truck uh, for, for for upgrades. But I mean, the beauty of this is that for and again for me is that now I have the ability to tow. The truck is much more. Uh, nimble, it feels, it handles so much better. I'm telling you, it's a much better experience. The only byproduct, the only disadvantage to doing the Devers, I don't know if you could hear that, but there's a little, there's always a little crunchiness. My Gen 1 has the exact same rear suspension. You get a little squeak crunchiness. Um, I think you can send out the Devers to be uh, DLC coded uh, to aid in that. Uh, I didn't have the time or energy to chase that and you really can't hear it when you're driving the truck. If you had the windows down and you were moseying on a back road, you can hear it squeaky, crunchy, uh, but it's so subtle you can't hear it in the truck at all. Uh, so it doesn't bother me. It didn't bother me on the Gen 1, so I didn't pursue the, the DLC coating of the, of the suspension. So two and a quarter front, Devers plus three, remove the block, you end up with a plus one in the rear. So we end up with a pretty darn level looking truck. I wouldn't call myself a tint uh, aficionado. I just have a lot of experience with tint being in Florida the last uh, 16 years. Uh, tint is a must and a must immediately for me. Uh, I'm a huge proponent of tinting the entire windshield, which is pretty much illegal everywhere. Uh, Florida, they don't really bother you. Plus, I'm always doing a very light tint on the windshield. So this truck has my preferred tint, uh, which is Lumar. Uh, I've had uh, SunTech, I've had U Uber Optic or Huber Op Optic. I've had um, uh, SunTech, I've had 3M, I've had 3M Crystalline, 3M Color Stable. Uh, my favorite by far is, is either Lumar CTX or Formula One. They're both made by Lumar. Uh, the windshield, my, this has uh, Air Blue 80, so Lumar Air Blue 80%, which is a ceramic, you know, heat rejecting type tint. Uh, so, and I do the entire windshield. I've refused to do the goofy strip. I'll we'll never do that. So we tent the entire windshield. I usually have to pay cash. Usually have to, you know, pretend like it didn't happen and uh, deny everything. Uh, but it it takes the edge off. Uh, and and doing like a 50% or a 35% like some people do in the windshield. I've done that before, and I want to be able to see. You know, it's just it's just uh, it's not my bag. The side windows have 20%, same thing as the rear. Now, we did the same thing on the side and the rear. The rear already has some factory tint, so you'll notice it's a little darker uh, than, the, than the fronts. Uh, but this, uh, this tint uh, is ceramic, heat rejecting, UV rejecting, all of that stuff. Uh, I want to say it was 350 bucks to do the whole truck, something like that. Uh, and, uh, and I think it's worth paying extra to get somebody who's good and then using a better product. So Lumar CTX or Formula One, I always do 20% on the sides and rears, the whole, the, whole, the whole vehicle with the exception of the windshield, I'm doing Air Blue 80 on. And the very last, uh, the last modification I did to this thing, which I don't know that I call it a modification, is a radar detector. Uh, so I'm using the uh, Uniden R3. I'm not, a, I'm not a radar detector expert. If you want an expert, go look at uh, my, my buddy uh, Ariel from Vortex Radar, uh, vortexradar.com or Vortex Radar, uh, his YouTube channel. He teaches you how to set it up and everything. Uh, but I have it on a blend mount with a mirror tap. Fords mirror tap really well. They're easy to get because of the way that the wire, wire connects. Uh, so a blend mount, uh, which is you know 150 bucks, and then a 400 dollars radar detector, and you're good to go. The tint doesn't affect the radar detector at all. Everything works great, and uh, that's the only modification I've done to the rear of the factory floor mats, and everything else is is the same. So that's my 2018 Ford Raptor and the modifications I've chosen. Uh, the uh, the truck is set up the way I would uh, recommend. I, I'd do it all over again, pretty much the same. You have the jury still out on the front bumper. Uh, but there's something to be said about taking it to a place. There's something really comforting about being able to do that. I took it to Ultimate Auto in Orlando. I dropped it off. I said, here's what I want to do. Uh, and, uh, and I showed up four days later. I did that on two different occasions with the fender flares and the painting of stuff. 
and the side, uh, the side uh, steps. And the second time I dropped it off for the suspension wheels and all of that. Uh, and uh, there's something to be said about being able to do that. Uh, so uh, I've lost uh, the, the, my comfort level with, with exactly how everything works. I lose a little bit by doing that, uh, but by not doing it all myself. But in you know, my truck knowledge, I don't have the right tools, the right jacks. So it just made sense to drop the thing off. Uh, wheels, I would do the same wheels again. I love the, the offset is great. I do the same tires, the size is perfect. I like doing just a, an inch up, changes the look, but then I still get all the meat, you know, all the meat of the tire. So I like that. I also like the fact that my speedometer isn't all jacked up. Uh, going to 20s and some really narrower tires is not, not really my style. Uh, the suspension is, is great. I already had lots of experience with that because my Gen 1. Uh, playing with the gl gloss grills and stuff is something I never would have done if I didn't have an Ultimate Auto to drop it off and have do. So I I'm probably done with the truck. Uh, I'm probably going to sell it here. So if you're interested in it, hit me up. Uh, it is a well-maintained, uh, perfectly corrected uh, coating on it's legit. I mean, the truck is, is, is legit. I just don't know that I need two trucks. Uh, go back and watch the video where I talk about uh, me um, I'm pursuing and searching for a, uh, a unicorn E92 M3. So that would replace this. But uh, you know, if you're going to have a truck, I think this is the one. It uh, it really does look great. So uh, last uh, last couple of uh, points. Um, the the thing that I was uh, fumbling trying to figure out. Those are from Chief Manufacturing. The center caps. Uh, and then I get a lot of questions about the deck lid here. Uh, this is the Ford Performance the flush mount. It's not the one in the configurator. If you click the one in the configurator, it's this like two inch tall goofy thing that sits on top of the bed. Uh, the advantage of that one is you can close the tailgate without lifting it. Uh, but this one here is, I think it's made by backflip. Uh, but it's just, uh, I like it because it's flush and I don't have to see it sticking out. So. Anyway, uh, last thing uh, I, I won't do and wouldn't recommend doing would be an exhaust. <laughs> I wouldn't mess with it on this thing. I may do a tune on the truck at some point uh, because you can extract you know, 150 more horsepower out of this pretty easily, pretty cheaply. I already have the intercooler for it doing an intake and a tune and I could probably pick up 100 horsepower and 150 foot pounds of torque. So I may do that if I do keep it. Uh, but the exhaust, these things sound like crap. So I don't want to amplify crap. So sorry to you guys who love how these things sound. I, I, I hate it. But most of the time, doors are closed, windows are up, and uh, stereo's on, so I don't have to hear any of that. Anyway, that's my uh, 18 Ford Raptor. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. So what happens when the, when the force pulls you back, your foot naturally comes off the gas. You have to keep your foot to the floor. Foot to the floor.